Okay, so welcome to the DevHub Permit Request request Training. Um, we're going to be going, going over a demonstration and a review of available resources for you. The agenda today is to provide context for the purpose and use of DevHub. We'll be demoing how to submit a permit request in the system. Um, and I'll take you on a very exciting tour of our existing resources and um, where to find click-by-click -click instructions to help kind of reinforce this information. We'll wrap up with a question and answer session. So again, uh, key callouts, the permitting process we know is really complex. Um, details can vary depending on your property or your specific types of projects. So today's presentation, since it's a DevHub focus, is going to focus a little bit more on um, how to submit a permit request. And the good news is if we wrap and you're like, whoa, that was a lot of information, um, I'm also going to show you where to find information to reinforce this content um, to help you down the road. If you have site-specific or project-specific questions, um, I am sorry to acknowledge that this isn't going to be the best venue for those questions, um, but I'm going to show you how to schedule a 15-minute appointment to get some one-on-one -on -one time to talk things through with an expert. All right, I'm going to kick it off with some historical context. Um, we all know the last year has yielded a lot of changes. Um, life in the times of COVID meant that we had some lockdowns and social distancing requirements. So the city of Portland needed to find different ways to accept permit requests. Um, about a year, year and a half ago, DevHub allowed you to apply for uh, trade permits and urban forestry permits. Now we get to Submit permit requests for um, building permits. You can apply for trade permits with plan review and wireless requests. And these requests can be submitted 24 seven. So we're gonna start at the beginning. What is DevHub? DevHub first and foremost is a communication tool. So what DevHub does more than anything else is it allows customers to submit permit request materials such as your plan sets, your documents, your forms, and then also allows staff to easily access them and communicate with you. So I encourage you to think of DevHub less as a new system and more of an, a remote version of our in-person development services center. Um, it's where you're gonna submit your application, get feedback and find out about submission requirements. So how does DevHub work? It's a really simple interface. You're gonna find that out today. Um, but what it does do is speak to our permitting system. So it allows customers, you guys, to send all of your permit request documentation to the city. You can submit your permit request through DevHub and then the city staff will review customer submissions. Staff may ask for additional information or additional documentation. You'll get that information or that communication will happen through DevHub. And then you can submit corrections or additional documents um, through DevHub again. So just like permit applications that were initiated in the Development Services Center, any permit request sent through DevHub um, will follow several stages of permit review. And at a high level, a lot of things haven't changed. So you're going to submit your permit request in your application. You're going to have a completion review where permit techs are going to make sure that you've met minimum submittal requirements. There'll be a pre-screen review with life safety and planning and zoning, and then go into comprehensive plan review followed by development. So from your perspective in regards to what, what interfaces you're going to be using and what your experience will look like means that you'll be submitting your permit request and application through DevHub. That completion review, depending on what process your permit review goes through, will happen either in DevHub or Project Docs. Same with your pre-screen review. And then your comprehensive plan review, um, you're probably familiar with the term either single PDF or the Project Docs, full Project Docs plan review. Today's presentation, again, we're going to focus mostly on these top three sections because that's what where we do our permit request. So, one of the big questions, Susanna already mentioned it, what's the deal with DevHub and Project Docs? How do they play together? Um, so DevHub is often gonna be used in tandem with Project Docs, but they are different tools for different purposes. So DevHub, again, communication tool. It's where you submit your permit requests. Your, it's a fancy uploading tool, adding your application, your plan sets, your PDF documents. Project Docs is, instead of a virtual DSC, it's more of a virtual version of those giant plan rules. So Project Docs allows us to do comprehensive plan review, get into the nitty gritty of those technical drawings. Because DevHub and Project Docs are different tools with different purposes, they do require different user accounts and login information. So for some projects, applicants will manage a DevHub account, and then once it goes into, um, Further in the process, that project will flow to project docs. Again, so permit requests are initiated through DevHub and then pre-screen will either take place in DevHub or in project docs. If we dive in just a little deeper, 
That also means that your permit requests um, will follow one of two paths for that comprehensive review, either the single PDF process, and that's going to happen for all plan sets that are um, submitted that are less than 35 plan pages. Your pre-screen will happen in DevHub for that process. For full project docs, those are for um, plans that have 35 or more plan pages, and your pre-screen will happen, oh, I'm so sorry, single PDF, pre-screen and DevHub. Full project docs, pre-screen and project docs. The good news is you do not have to worry. The permit tech is going to identify which path your request, how your request is going to be processed, and you're going to get really clear instructions on how to move your project forward. Um, a little bit later in this presentation, I'll be showing you where to find information that outlines both the single PDF and the full project docs process, so you can really dig into what the differences in those processes are. Um, again, though, we're focusing on those top three portions of the permitting process, so we are going to talk more about that permit request. Before we dive into the demo, do we have any questions from the group? Should Sorry. I... <laughs> There's no questions, Taylor. Thank you. Okay. Should have queued up Jeopardy music. That, that always helps, I feel like. Okay, so we are going to jump into a permit request demonstration. I'm going to be toggling back and forth between a lot of screens. Um, so if you see a flash of, of the wrong thing, um, I ask for a little bit of grace, but here we go. We're going to imagine that somewhere in Portland, someone needs a permit. It's us, We're, we need the permit. So we are going to get all of our stuff together. We're gonna save it in a folder on our desktop because that's gonna make our lives easier and that's what we love to do. We're also, before we jump into the permit request process, going to make sure that our application is properly filled out and that we didn't miss any of the easy to miss fields on our application. So. Here we are, our application. We have put in our job address, important bit of data. We've added a description of work. This field is often left blank. So this is definitely something to make sure that you have um, added on your application. The property owner field, just a heads up, um, that information will be verified within the permitting system. So that does need to be accurate. If you have a contractor, the contractor um, chosen, feel free to in include that information and an accurate and updated CCB license number is an important thing to include. For the applicant section, one thing to bear in mind for this section is the app listed applicant is who's going to be getting the communications about this project. So um, the person who is managing this project should be listed as in the applicant section. Actually, that's an interesting thing for, I'm not sure who on this call to, think about, um, we have a policy at McKinsey that we're not allowed to sign as the applicant because the property owner or the client is the one who is actually responsible for the project. We are the represent, or actually we're not supposed to be representative either because we're not lawyers. We are the contact person. So uh, we would usually check that contact person box to and then put our name there. Wonderful. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. It's a great call out. I think the main point was the person listed in this yeah. section. But I appreciate that distinction. Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving over to the right hand side of the form, one call out is these sections are the two most common missed pieces on the application. So the valuation um, is often left blank, um, hanging out on the right side of the form. Sometimes people miss that, as well as the initial section in the statement of fact. So just wanted to call out those. Um, easy to miss sections and let you know that um, incomplete active applications are one of the major causes for delays. So getting ahead of that um, on the front end is one way to expedite your permit request. All right. So you can get to DevHub by typing in devhub.portlandoregon.gov in your browser. However, one of the, to the tour, the very exciting resource tour I'm going to be going on later, um, we're going to dive into this really comprehensive web page. Um, which is very concisely titled apply or pay for building permits, trade permits and zoning permits. It just flows off the tongue. Um, but the good news about this website is it um, is going to show you everything you need to know about the, or a lot that you need to know about the permitting process. It also has a link to DevHub itself um, in section two. So know that one thing you can do is just bookmark this web page that we're gonna tour in a little bit, and then you'll have links to everything you need, including DevHub. For now, here we go. Welcome to the magical interface that is Development Hub PDX. Um, I am logged in. 
in the purpose in the you know, interest of time. And today, I'm just gonna show you really quickly, um, when you log into DevHub, you land on the My Permit section. This is your home screen. It's gonna list all of your in-process or active permits. You can also update your account information, view or pay for fee pay fees. There's a My Bills section. You can view your inactive permits and your permit history. And while there is a help and FAQ tab here, um, I'm gonna recommend that you instead use the website that I'm going to um, give you a great tour of later. So today we need to submit a permit request. We're going to click the apply for a new permit button. And the first thing we're gonna be asked to do is submit what type of permit we want. So we are going to select building permit. We have a commercial new construction project today. I'm super excited about. Now, I've done my due diligence. I've done my research. I've checked out the minimum submittal requirements. I've dotted my I's and crossed my T's. Had I not done those things up until this moment, this is the moment where I would take advantage of this information on this website. I could confirm general information. I could look at those minimum submittal requirements and um, make sure that everything is ready to go before I start my application. But because we've done everything we need to, I'm gonna click continue. And next, I'm gonna be asked to agree to a lot of things. Some of those things are that I am being honest on this application, that I have the consent of the property owner to do this work, that I will pay my fees, and also that I'm responsible for responding to inquiries or requests for additional information in a timely manner. So um, anytime you have to review this, I would check. Um, these do get updated sometimes. There's also some additional information and links to permit fee and zoning code changes currently on DevHub. So I'm gonna click that box and click continue. All right, and you can see, if you haven't been in DevHub before, it's a simple interface, mostly web forms, um, walks you through, but some of the things to know is because it's so simple, um, it's not necessarily gonna give you hard stops if you're missing information. So that's why knowing those resources, being able to check those submittal requirements are so important on the front end, because um, there's a little bit of legwork to make sure that we're meeting those requirements and then uploading to DevHub. So. When I am finding my property in the system, DevHub often prefers less information instead of more. So I am going to enter my house number. And then I'm gonna check, check my direction. I recommend using the drop-down menu. It stops, um, kind of eliminates the possibility that you might use um, unnecessary punctuation or have accidental extra spaces. I'm gonna hit search. If you ever start with these kind of wider search parameters uh, and you get 20 results back, but you don't see your address, know the DevHub only returns 20 results. So if that's the case, you're gonna hit that back button, narrow those search parameters, make sure there aren't any unnecessary spaces, hit search one more time, and there's my address. I'm gonna hit continue. So we've told DevHub what type of permit we want. We have told it where our property is, and now we're gonna give it kind of the meat and potatoes of our application. We're gonna let it know that we want it to be a commercial category of construction. This is a new construction project. The description of work is, this is a new three-story office building. And associated site work for the center and inclusion. My request type is a building permit. And I'm going to add my valuation here. And then my plan says I have approximately 30 pages. All right, I'm going to hit update and continue after I have confirmed that all of my required fields have been filled in. Okay, so at this point, we've told DevHub what type of permit we want, where our property is, and we've given it the property or the project information. Next, we're going to upload attachments. So you can see here there's a couple different sections on the screen. We're just going to scroll down to the upload new document and use the attachment type drop down menu. So the cool thing here is all of these attachment types, other than the other option, will auto populate for you. So I'll just start with my application going to click the browse button. And of course, I've saved all of my materials in one easy to find location. So this is going to be easy peasy. I'm going to grab my building permit application. Please note how close the add attachment and the continue button are. Um, we've gotten some feedback that it can be easy to hit this button instead of this one. So just know that we do have to hit the add attachment button first. I know this sounds really obvious, but in the heat of the moment, this is a thing. 
Um, and then you can confirm that your attachment is indeed attached under the permit request attachments section. How many times can we use that word? All right, next one, plans. I'm gonna attach my plan set. Boom, open, add attachment. All right, we got both of those. One more, I'm gonna add my structural calcs. And add attachment once more. So this is the point in your permit request where if you're like, ooh, you know, actually I didn't really review those minimum submittal requirements as in depth as I should have, um, or ooh, I should talk to somebody and ask a question. Uh, you can always hit the save for, button, save for later button and then come back to this at a later date if you need to. Um, however, we are good to go. I'm going to hit continue. And I wanna point out that here we are on step four, the confirmation. Uh, this little note here is letting you know that until you hit the submit button, none of the information you've uploaded, uploaded is going to land in the hands of a permit tech. So um, just know that we do have to take this one final step to make sure that this whole package shoop, goes off and gets sent to the city. We're gonna hit submit. And now we have a request in our My Permit section. All right, so we've submitted our permit request. We're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Permit tech got our package, they've reviewed it, and we're going about our day, sitting at our desk, ding, email hits the inbox. And we have a message that says, permitting services has reviewed the submitted permit request and identified the following items that require your attention. Please log into DevHub, navigate to the permit request identified above, boop, 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 this number right there, and provide the requested updates listed below. So it, it, the cool thing about these emails is it gives you a sneak peek into what you're being asked to provide. So we have a message here letting us know that we need to provide a completed application form because dang it, I missed the submitted value of construction and was also missing signatures. Um, so let's go ahead. We've got the number of the permit we need to look at. Let's pop back to DevHub and take a look. Under status, you'll get a little, um, kind of heads up into what requires your attention because the permit request that you need to take action on will say pending customer response. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. Once I click on that, it's gonna show me once more that same message that came through on that email. Please provide a completed application form. You're missing the submitted value of construction and signatures. The good news is there's only one thing you can really do here. It's pretty, um, I think it, it's a good, intuitive guide to click the upload attachment button. And we're gonna to wanna to make those corrections, save an updated form of my application. Um, you can see here that the My Permitting Services tech was kind enough to add reject it, rejected at the front of this file name. So it's really easy for me to identify what needs to be deleted here. That's not always gonna be the case, but it might be something that you see. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this building permit application off. And then I'm going to upload my updated one. Quadruple check this time just to make sure I didn't miss anything else. I'm going to click Add Attachment. And we've got all three up here. One call out. Last time, there was another screen after you hit Submit that gave you a chance to go back. Um, on these follow-up communications, that won't be the case. This is the screen where you can either say, hey, I'm going to save this for later or I'm gonna hit submit and she's gone. So just one call out on that first. We have a little bit more wiggle room that one of the other screen during our initial permit request. Gonna go back home. You can see here now, after it thinks, there we go, that this permit has changed to received customer response. So you can also track your progress there. All right, so permitting services has looked at our request we sent our updated information. I'm feeling really good about that application now. Um, permitting services was like, yes, done. You have met your minimum submittal requirements. We're in pre-screen because we're doing the single PDF. Again, 30 plan pages for this project. Um, planning and zoning and life safety reviewers have taken a look at this and then ding, another email hits my inbox. I log, I go ahead and open it and it says, life safety has reviewed the submitted permit request and identified the following items that require your attention. Please log into DevHub and navigate to the permit request identified above. 
right there. And this time we have a message from Life Safety saying, ooh, please provide Life Safety Intake Completeness Checklist, which I forgot. So we're gonna go back to Dev Hub. We're gonna find our pending customer response permit. We click on that detail button. Once again, we're gonna see what, the what we're being requested to provide, which is the Life Safety Intake Completeness Checklist, which I just happen to have. I'm gonna hit Upload Attachments. And other, because this is an other item, I will have to manually type in with an audience. I'm just going to really hope this is spelled correctly. All right, a little bit of a lag. And I'm going to click that browse button. My checklist open attachments power of repetition guys and then now that we've got all four documents attached again all pdfs because pdfs are the only acceptable format we're going to hit submit now this back and forth you know your projects if you're really on top of it and things aren't missing and there aren't any questions and your projects are straightforward you might not have two kickbacks it's really going to depend on your project itself um, but we've now given the city everything that they need and our permit requ request has been accepted for review so ding i get another email that lands and the, the email is going to say this your project has been accepted for review and your permit request is now closed will no longer appear in your my permits list on dev hub a separate email will be sent providing both the amount of the intake fees and further instructions but then it gives us another ivr number and a permit number for reference and for further communication regarding your building permit please refer to either of the following building permit numbers so this is a really important concept when you first submit a permit request you're going to be given a permit request number Okay, that number is going to stay with you through the whole process that we just went through together. And then once it's been accepted for review, you'll be assigned your building permit number. So that is just something to know that that number you're tracking will change after your permit request has been approved. I have a question and I don't know when the um, right time to ask it is so. Um, but okay, that whole process of being submit, being accepted for review through DevHub, and each of those rounds where staffs taking a look, what what's the timeline currently for you guys to review the submittal and provide comments and that back and forth? I'm gonna hand this over to one of our permitting services experts. So, hi, my name is Tracy Nessler, and I'm one of the supervisors for the commercial team. And for commercial right now, we're about three weeks out at the initial intake, um, and that has been um, whittled down from a two-month backlog. So we're consistently staying right around three weeks. We are working to get that down to two weeks, but that is what you can expect from the COT when it comes to um, screening your intake request. Um, and then from there, with a customer, once you respond to if it is rejected, and then it is sent back to you and then you respond with the new information. We're trying to keep that received customer response within a week. We'd like to get that narrowed down to um, two to three days. Okay, so for, so, um, so, um, and at that point, all we're submitting, I think most of our, well, I feel like most of our projects are gonna be the full project docs. We, we probably have some, and we do have some on this call who are, who do more of the small little TIs that would maybe be single PDF. But basically, um, we're typically not submitting drawings at that initial submittal, right? It's the, it's the application form and this other materials. So from the time point we submit that, it's three plus weeks. Yeah, so it, regardless of your project, you are, whether you think it's going to go single PDF or you think it's going to go full-blown project docs, you are going to want to submit your drawings and you would submit those drawings in a single PDF and you would upload all your documentation. That way, if it's not going to go full right. project okay. docs for a reason, we, have, um, we, we can just transition easily into single PDF. From there, once it's determined, we need your plans to determine whether how many permits to set up and to make sure that we have a, a good understanding of your project before we kick it over to full-blown project docs. So you will then receive, as you're probably already familiar with, you will receive that task from project docs um, and also an email, separate email, letting you know that it's going the project docs route, full-blown project docs route. 
Okay, right. Yeah, I think I missed that. Okay, that makes sense. It makes sense. Um, okay, there were a couple of questions in the chat. I don't know when the right time is to talk about technical like application form guidance. I mean, let's let's dig in. So, I think I saw. Is what if the database has not caught up with the current ownership? So if the database hasn't caught up with the current ownership, and this is, um, and Rochelle, I'll jump in, but um, this is, should be true. I, I believe it's true for residential as well as commercial. You will be required to submit a copy of the recorded deed. We do, before we request that though, we do check Multnomah County records um, as well. And so if it doesn't match up with Multnomah County's records, then that's when we request a copy of the recorded deed. And then the next question was, do we need signatures on all three sections on the left side of the building permit application? So Taylor, so, maybe you can scroll back up to slide. Yeah. I, so we don't, we do need to set, we need somebody that's, we need a signature on there. Um, typically it's the, applica the applicant that signs the form, but we need to take, uh, we need a signature letting us know who's going to be taking responsibility for the information provided on the application. And that signature would then also match up what's in the statement of fact. Oh, interesting um, on that. Typically with the statement of fact, because it's related to asbestos and lead-based paint, we like to have the contractor initial that. So then your, then your contractor is also saying that I acknowledge that the, the related, I can't read that, but they're acknowledging that's also acknowledging that the statement, um, what you're providing is accurate and that you have the permission from the, from the owner to go ahead and go about submitting. Sometimes we'll see two initials in here, but it's just really one was required. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'll have to talk to our risk you know, legal management folks about that. Um, we've definitely done it both ways, but you know, just kind of like, what are we agreeing to? Because if, if we're the, app, the contact person and we certify that everything is true to best of our knowledge, that's us, but then we know nothing about the asbestos and lead-based paint. So we'll think about that. So really when you, when you take a look at that, the highlighted information, it is really speaking, the initials are really speaking to the statement of fact and that you're certified that the facts and the information set forth in this application are true and complete. So I, so you see that the contractor information, there's that little blurb about, hey, please make sure if you're a contractor that these are your requirements, but the statement of fact is what you see in the highlighted area. And then regardless of who signs at the initial, do you need the contractor's signature before you issue the permit? No, we just need your CC, their CCB number, and obviously it has ah. to be act, um, active. Okay. We just need require one signature, and typically it is the applicant that we we see it on the application. Thank you, Tracy. Are there any other questions on this section? Yeah, there's one more that just popped up. Um, says, I'm clicking through the new application on DevHub now and I don't see a link to the checklist. I've had issues finding that before. Anyway, if we could get that email saying we need to submit something it can contain to, sorry, anyway, if we can get that email saying we need to submit something, it can contain the link to the document. So that's probably something that we, we will We'll take that back and see if it's anything that we are able to change in our process, Mike. Um, I don't think, Tracy, unless you have an answer for that right now. Uh, no, okay. I don't think I, I understood I think that's that kind the of a whole... suggestion. Okay. Yeah, so I, I just clicked through and I, I started a new new permit and I can see the what you need for a complete permit application and nothing that the, the checklist that that uh, Taylor was showing that was her first comment that she didn't do the checklist and then went and filled out the checklist and uploaded it. That checklist, I'm, I have a hard, hard time finding that one on your website. And right now as I'm clicking through, that was one thing I checked to see if, if it was if it was clear in here in your, in your uh, permit application and the requirements and, and it's not, and I don't see a link to it. You, you got to the permit application page and and, or the, the, the permit application itself, but not that checklist. So you're talking about the life safety completeness checklist. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. yes. Um, 
Okay. Uh, so we have been working on improving our website and it's getting easier and easier to far, uh, find documents. Um, so when you're looking for that, I would go into the search area within our website and I would type in life safety completeness and then you should get a return on that. Yeah, and I think you could find one, but it was one of those where it, what you need for a complete permit application, you'd think if that's something that is required for a complete permit application, that it could be listed there for us. Okay. Okay, we we'll can take definitely that take that back to um, the website team communications and see if there's any way to improve, improve that. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Let's go ahead and... Sorry, this is one of my many screen moments. There we go. Okay, so we have talked about what DevHub is, giving you a good foundational understanding of um, its function. We've talked through a permit request and now the tour. Um, I'm going to acknowledge there's something a little awkward about a um, website tour virtually, <laughs> but I'm going to do my very best to um, bring this to you as an engaging a manner as possible. So. I want to show you the website I'm going to be referring to a lot, and I'm about to show you how to get here. Um, actually, here we'll start here. If you want to follow along, feel free to pull up a browser. If you've got more than one monitor, um, we're going to start on Portland, Oregon, Portland.gov front slash BDS. When you get to this website, you're going to scroll down, and there is a tile that says "Apply or Pay for a Building or Trade Permit." If you click on that, it's going to take you to the website I've already introduced you to. I want to walk you through this just a little bit um, on the actual browser because you'll see once I start to scroll, there's a lot here. I mean, this is a lot of information and there's lots of numbers and there's lots of links and there's a lot of text. The goal today for us to review this in this presentation is to demystify the website a little bit. And I'd like to give you a little bit of context that this is, I find this format actually, first of all, it's, we're excited at the city because we are working on accessibility. So not only is this um, accessible to us, it's also accessible to screen readers. But in the way this information is organized, it's going to outline all the information that you need to know about permitting in process order, chronological order. So it's going to tell you what you need. It's going to tell you um, where to apply. We're going to go through all of these things and then walk you through the different steps of the process. So if you ever find yourself sort of lost in the permitting process, this is a great place to start. And you can um, kind of branch out from this website. So I do recommend saving this. Um, again, this is where you can find a link to DevHub, all the information you need. So once you land here, one of the first things you're going to want to do under section one is find out where you can apply for your permit type. If you click on this link right here, you're going to land on a web page that breaks down in a convenient table, the different types of permits and applications with links, as well as where you can apply and a link to DevHub here. Under that same section, embedded in the text is a hyperlink that reads, um, please read about the basic requirements for permit applications. We've um, acknowledged that incomplete applications are one of the most common causes for delay during the permitting process. So um, I've said it once, I'll say it again, please do dive into the um, minimum submittal requirements uh, before you start your permit request process. If you click on this link, it's going to take you to a page with really robust resources running down um, what the different permits are, what you need for your applications, the rules for permit plans, the different types of supporting documents, um, and a link. You're going to find a link to a, on a lot of our web pages to schedule a 15-minute appointment if you do want to have a conversation with an expert. Further down that web page, that resource page we just talked about in section two, it's going to be a link, as I've mentioned a couple of times, to DevHub. Um, this is where you can launch to go create a new account if you need to. If you click on this link, you will go to DevHub. Um, the information you need to create a new account is your full name, phone number, email address, and your physical address. Keep on scrolling on that resource page. We also have um, some really great resources, click-by-click -click instructions for that permit request process that I just walked you through um, with screenshots and numbered steps, uh, as well as contact information for and links to um, other documentation. I also have an FAQ that's pretty darn robust. So if you have some questions um, and you want to start exploring answers before say, setting up an appointment, that's a great thing to explore. So again, under section three on that same website, 
We also have um, a click by click instructions on how to pay fees online. So if you would like some help navigating that process, feel free to check out that resource. Now, if earlier you were like, okay, so you've mentioned there are two different processes for my permit request, either single PDF or full project docs, that didn't give me a lot of help, of helpful information. I would like to know more about those. This is where you're gonna find that. Under section six on that resource website, there are links to our single PDF process web page and um, a lot of information about the full project docs review. Um, so just know that if you'd like to dig in and know what to expect, we really, really recommend and encourage you to um, look into that process or these processes. The bottom of the page, there's also a link to um, how to check your uh, permit application status online. So you can go ahead and click on the hyperlink right here for more information on that. We also, um, there's also the ability to check your permit status using the advanced search function on Portland Maps. I'm gonna say it again with, you know, we're moving to remote applications. I think one of the services that we were really hungry to provide was the ability for customers to ask questions and have that kind of face-to-face -face contact with experts. Um, we're really, really excited to have recently launched our 15 minute appointments platform, which makes it super easy for folks to schedule 15 minute conversations with different experts, depending on your needs. So um, you're gonna see this link on a lot of different web pages. Um, it is listed in the related sidebar on that web page that I showed you. Um, and you can also just Google 15 minute appointment city of Portland and it will take you where you need to go. But that's a resource that I definitely want you guys to know about and um, it's a great thing to take advantage of. Okay, we're getting ready to wrap up here with the web tour. A couple simple dev hub hacks. I'm gonna review those address search tips. Start with less information um, rather than more. Most people who get zero search results on their address are entering their full street address. There might be an extra space. There might be a period. Um, that is most often the cause for the I can't find my address scenario. So starting with less information is a good way to um, head off or to get ahead of that. Avoid using unnecessary punctuation. And again, with the search results, if you get 20 search results and you don't see your property listed, hit the back button and narrow those search parameters. If you find yourself working on several projects and email starts to feel a little unwieldy, one of the things we recommend is sorting your email um, by subject line, because that will, uh, using the permit number in the subject line, group your communications by project. Last call out, if you are ever supporting a project with another team member, some folks who use um, DevHub have considered or have created team login strategies, either with a um, team login or a project specific login for their DevHub account. So that's just something to consider. If you need to access a project um, and it's on somebody else's DevHub login, you will not be able to do that without logging in with their credentials. Whew, we did it, you guys. 16 more minutes for open questions if you have any. Um, and again, we've got experts in the room. If you have any questions or would like to see um, anything else on the website more up close, um, I can definitely navigate there too. I have a really quick one just on that very last point you made about mm -hmm. the team login strategy. Do you know if DevHub lets you have uh, more than one machine logged in under the same account at the same time? Ooh, that's a great question. Is Lee Wheeler in the house? haven't tested that, um, but we, you certainly could try it. <laughs> I think, I, mean, I think project docs, account? yeah, I think project docs doesn't, um, although it's been a while since I tested it, but you know, if you have multiple people trying to view the same comments or, okay, you respond to these ones and I'll respond to these ones, you know, it, it's like kicking people out. Okay. Lee, would you be willing to test that with me in the next week sure. or so and we can add that to the, the materials? Yeah, put that on my calendar and we can certainly test that. Awesome. Okay, Colleen, will you capture that so we can include that in any follow-up questions? I got it. We will get awesome. back to you, Susanna. Great question, Susanna. I thank you for bringing that Thanks. up. Not necessarily a, a question, but one of the things that I saw is that through the process, it allows you to delete your files. Um, and so I thank you for doing that. That's one of the frustrating things we've had with Project Docs is where we accidentally upload something and then there's nothing we can do about it. So. Um, Thank you. Of course. 
And Mike, I'm going <laughs> to thank you for calling that out. I don't, I don't want to burst your bubble, but I am also going to call out one thing, which is that um, that opportunity to delete and edit attachments only does come with a kickback. So um, I just want to reiterate that if you have the opportunity to, you're asked to provide more information, you get that um, uh, uh, like awaiting customer response status and you log in, that's your one opportunity to upload and download or upload and um, adjust. So uh, definitely make sure that everything is correct before hitting that submit button. Those will be the only chances you can get back in. Any other questions? I'm hesitant to ask, but mine is a little bit, hasn't been necessarily covered, but as part of the payment process, does it have to be the applicant? We run into a lot of issues with these online permit processes where the client wants to pay for it, but they're not the applicant and we need to get them added or there's no way they can do it. And then we need to go through and change everything because payment becomes a critical part of the process. Great question. Um, permitting services folks, have you guys had to work with any clients on that? I can answer. This oh, Lee, thank you. Yeah, um, if we, we will take anyone's money who would like to pay us, um, all they have to do is um, log into DevHub or create a login if they don't already have one. They would need the IVR number of the permit that they need to pay and they can do a search on that. Um, so they'd log in and then they would click view pay fees. And the best way to do it is with that IVR number. And um, they'd just click, the enter it, click search. And then it would show um, a screen that says kind of like, is this the one you want? It would list it and you'd click continue. And then it would show that the bills that are available to be paid. Um, the only caveat with that is that um, usually, well, DevHub allows payment during certain folder statuses. So if it's at the beginning and it's the application and we're, you know, you're ready to move to under review, then it's, it's great. It will allow payment. If it's, if you're under review, that means the uh, fees are, you know, they're changing. People are looking at it. They're adding fees. They're subtracting fees, whatever and it's not ready to pay. And so if it shows bills, but it tells you that it's not ready to pay yet, that just means that it's under a status that is not ready to pay. I, this is uh, Matt Majors. I have an additional comment on this. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, the other thing we can do, and I mean, uh, if you could do it online, of course, we prefer you to do everything online. It just makes life easier. But if worse comes to worse, uh, you can call the front desk. We can get you directed to our cashier's desk. So if you're not able to log into someone's account or find that particular permit, as long as that um, that permit has been billed for those fees, you can pay those over the phone with the cashier. So it doesn't necessarily need you to log in. In that sense, we can we can handle it in other ways if the need should arise. Yeah, I think this is important to talk about. Um, a lot of our clients still prefer paper checks, especially for large amounts, and or they have to get a check ordered from somewhere, and they, it's like, where do they mail it? And so, um, and so for both for intake and issuance fees at the end, um, what do you recommend um, we advise them on? I don't know the details of the e check or what, but it's not like you can. Most people can't use do a credit card for thirty thousand dollars fees. So there is always the option of being able to mail it in as long as they have the correct permit information in the memo on the check. It makes life really easy for them to um, attach those fees to that check. Uh, when it gets mailed in, we would direct that straight to the cashier. Um, and then they would go ahead and usually process it that day. Um, as for, um, there have been times where we've had customers at this point that have requested to um, they're, they're, they can do an e-check. I know that's a possibility. That's something you can contact the cashier and they can walk you through that if that's a preferable way, especially when you have larger amounts. Um, and then, um, uh, so, so there are two options there to be able to provide it that way. You can also reach out to the cashier directly and arrange time and they, they have a portal for creating access. 
directly to the cashier in the permit center. I dropped their phone number and their hours into the chat. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks, great. Rochelle. Can we pay issuance fees through DevHub also? You're talking about like your final review fees before the permits issued? Yeah. yeah. You should be able to once they're billed. Like uh, Lee was saying before, the, um, usually you get all the potential fees at the beginning and as it's going through the review process, it's narrowing it down to what exactly your project's gonna cost. And so until that's gotten narrowed all the way down and everything billed as it should be for your particular project, um, you won't be able to pay that until the end. But yes, you should be able to do that as long as it was, as long as it was all processed through um, DevHub. So the permit will show up again, let's say it's a um, project docs permit and it goes away from DevHub from my list of my projects once it's um, routed and everything. So then when it's ready to be issued, it pops back up. That I would have to ask Lee about. Lee, do you have anything to respond to that on how that would work? Can you say that again? I'm not sure I understood. So Sorry. for a full project docs project, we submit through DevHub and then we get the link that says go to Portland Maps and we, you know, we upload our our individual sheets in, in project docs. And then, you know, six months later and the permit's ready, is it, the project IVR isn't still in DevHub, right? Because we've just been working in project docs. So does it show up again with the fees? It's, it, you're gonna go, you're gonna, you would log into DevHub and then you would click view pay fees and then you get the search by IVR number and it would oh, yeah. search by your IVR number. Okay. And that is one of the cool things. Dev, DevHub like talks to our permitting system. So um, that is one, like that information does still flow back and forth between those. There's one comment in the chat. Um, what is the current typical timeline from start to finish to obtain a permit standard and within the FPP program? Tracy, Rochelle, Jeanette, are you able to give an estimate of a timeline? I know it varies drastically. So definitely will not be able to speak to the FPP question. Um, we are permitting services and uh, FPP is their own section. So answering that question is a question we get a lot and it's really hard to answer because as you know, the applicant has a lot to, to, um, to do with the timelines associated with a project. Project. What I can say is that once, if we're talking about a commercial project, once your permit has been accepted and you pay the intake fees, there is a standard review time associated with getting first reviews done. And it is uh, it's a goal. It's a goal to have first reviews done when you're looking at new, com uh, new construction or an addition. Our goal to have first reviews done is four weeks. And again, as you know, because you submit at the city all the time, uh, not all review, review groups hit that. So when you're taking a look at your projects, whether it's an alteration or new construction or addition, there's certain goals associated with that. And we do have a brochure online tracking your permit that gives you those, those timeframes associated with that. And then uh, once you come back and you submit corrections, corrections are taking about three to five days to process. Um, once corrections are logged in, depending on whether it was a preliminary check sheet or not, you typically get five business days for that reviewer typically gets five business days for review of those corrections. So again, depending, it's going to all depend on their to do list and, and what their workload looks like before they're able to get to those reviews. And then finally, once everyone signs off, you will then have pre issuance. Um, and again, you're probably all familiar with the system. And right now we have over 100 permits um, and has been um, staying over hundred on that list, um, it, it could take about up to a week or longer to go ahead and get a permit issued off of pre-issuance, a week to two weeks. Um, we can also show you in the, um, on our webpage, um, Taylor, I don't know if you want to jump to this part of it, but there, if you go in through our website, webpage at Portland, perfect. Yes, you know exactly what I'm saying. There, for pre-issuance and intake, you can check to see where you're at in line for a residential or commercial project by scrolling down, there you go, uh, right there. Um, and you can take the look at the pre-issuance list as well as the intake list. So follow-up question, um, and it said, and to clarify that's four weeks after that initial three week pre-screening. Yes. Yes. That is correct. 
Um, there's one additional question, and and David um, Kuhnhausen dropped in the the um, brochure that Tracy was referring to for the I think it's the review time goal line. Is that right, David? I didn't open it, but yeah, looks like that's right. It's actually calling. Hi everyone. Um, this is David Kuhnhausen. I'm the permitting services division manager. Just real quick, um, it actually is permit um, timelines associated with the overall review process. So I encourage all, everyone on the Campus side to take a look at that. It talks about performance metrics um, relevant to the last 20 business days. So Tracy touched on a lot of what we um, of what we monitor. Um, this gives a little bit more ho holistic view on some of the technical reviews and how long those are taking as well. So um, definitely encourage everyone to, to take a look at that. Thank you. Um, there's one more question in here and it says, is the only way to see the current status of reviews through Portland Maps when it's in single PDF? Hmm. If, so if you still have a fax machine, you can actually get a status fax back that gives you a real time status of your uh, different reviews. And so for that, you would call 823 I think it's 7,000 and then listen to the options and there's an option to go ahead and request a, a status fax back to you. And we'll, I know that, right? I'm oh, sorry. Oh, so I'm wondering if, I think I heard too, will project docs status updates be available in, on Portland maps as well? So project docs, they should be, ha they should have a view into that system for, for project docs. Um, when they do, when a reviewer reviews something in Project Docs and completes their review, they then also go into Amanda, our, our permitting software, that and signs off whether it's approved or check sheet status or not required, and that would show up in uh, Portland Maps as well as the FactsBack status update. Thanks, Tracy. So we are at 358. Um, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. And I also just want to thank um, whoever asked the payment question. I know you were hesitant, but I feel like that was that was a worthwhile conversation. <laughs> yeah, I was going to circle back to that and just say that's a big plus that anyone can pay. I think Matt kind of threw that out there that anyone can pay because it's a big hindrance in most jurisdictions, uh, scrambling to get people into the system or being denied in the system and figuring out how to pay for a permit. I would think anyone would want money, but but that's a big plus. One would think. <laughs> um, I will say if there are any last minute questions or questions that pop up for you, um, feel free to, um, my name is Taylor Barnes. You can send them my way, uh, or you can, I think there's a chain of communication going through Susanna and the um, Colleen as well. So, um, you know, we can answer any lingering questions that pop up, but I think otherwise with one minute to go, I see a hand. Go ahead, Adam. Oh, it was a goodbye, okay. It was a bye. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna give you four, man. Oh, there's quick one more. Question. Uh, how, you mentioned setting up 15 minute meetings with permit text. Can you send us a link or show us how to do that? Absolutely, let me hit a back button. Um, so is anybody able, I don't, I might just get messy and show the chat here. Okay. So this is the link to the website that I have been referencing this whole time. Um, and on the sidebar of this is a link to the 15 minute appointments page. And this web page, I've got to give props to our comms team and to the team who set this up, um, really gives you a full breakdown of um, what's possible with these, as well as instructions on how to schedule that appointment. So um, this website is definitely gonna be your best bet and gonna give you comprehensive rundown of what that would look like. Um, does that feel like enough information for you to get started? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Of course, great questions. If there are no more burning, urgent questions. I think we will wrap this meeting for the day, but I wanna thank you all for being here and for your listening ears. Thank you. <laughs>